Welcome to this presentation prepared specially for the Bright Talk Summit on Sales Productivity. I'm Deb Calvert, President of People First Productivity Solutions, and what I'm about to share with you comes from the field research and the sales ride-alongs that I do with my sales coaching clients. These are all new, easy, and free sales hacks to help frontline sellers save precious minutes every single day. Uh, now, you'll notice that I've selected seven hacks that can be used in prospecting and in making uh, those initial connections with your clients. However, most of these, all of these that I'm about to share with you are also applicable with your established customers too. So keep that in mind as you think about the various applications that, that you can use for each one of the upcoming hacks. Uh, for those of you who I, I haven't met before, let me just take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Deb Calvert, as I said. I'm, I'm the author of the bestseller, Discover Questions, Get You Connected, and of the award-winning blog, Connect to Sell. Be sure to, to link in with me, uh, or if not LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, or Google+. My handle is on screen there along with my email address. I conduct sales coaching and sales training and also do sales research, and I work in the leadership space too. Those, uh, those two disciplines converge in my current work, which you may have heard about. You might know it as the movement to stop selling and start leading. And it, like most of my work, is based in research with buyers. If you are new to Bright Talk, I'd like to point out two important features before we get started. First, be sure to notice the link called Attachments in the upper left corner of your screen. I've included two bonus resources for you there, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about those later. Second, you can subscribe to this channel and get more content each month from me if you'd like to. Um, Bright Talk makes it really easy to stay on top of what's new and what's relevant for you. So now, enough of that commercial stuff. Let's get down to business. Everything that I'm about to share with you can shave minutes from your day every single day, and the real value comes from the cumulative effect. If each one of these hacks saves you just three minutes a day, which I consider to be a very conservative estimate, then three minutes multiplied by, oh, let's say you choose five of these hacks, that's 15 minutes a day. And again, I think that's really conservative just because you might already be using one or two of these. Now, 15 minutes a day is an hour and 15 minutes a week. So if you are working 48 weeks a year, we're talking about, wait for it, we're talking about 60 hours a year. That's an extra week and a half that you can devote to selling and to customer-facing activities and to your own development. And what's more, once you get in the habit of finding and using sales hacks like these, you will continue to become increasingly efficient and more and more productive. I, I get a lot done. And people often ask me how I do that. Well, these are just a few of my secrets. And, well, more accurately, maybe I should say these are secrets that I've stolen shamelessly because all of these come from frontline sellers that I've worked with. So I'm including for you a sampling of, of a few tech tips, really easy ones, um, some step savers and routine processes, and sales accelerators that will make you significantly more efficient. Now the time-saving hacks I'm about to give you are just the starting point. I, I really strongly suggest as you save a little time here and there to reinvest it in yourself. So I've included some, some bonus resources for you up there in that attachment tab. And these will make you better in selling faster because you are better. Um, all these resources that I've included, they'll help you do one of two things. Some will help you save even more time. Right? There are podcasts, white papers, sales assessments, and, and more great tools in the resource guide. And these come from um, sales experts throughout my network and uh, from, from people that I've worked with who have discovered these resources. And then there are some other ones that will help you improve your skills because as you get better and better at the craft of selling, you'll save time by advancing your sales faster. So the list of books, all 
of which were released within the past three years. These are my, my personal favorites, and I think that you'll find that the time spent reading them will come back to you in significant time saved and sales made. So remember, just use that button in the upper corner to download these attachments at any time during the, the broadcast. And now, without further ado, now, the seven sales hacks that will make you more productive every day. Number one, uh, drum roll please, this will help you to write emails that are more appealing. This will help you to prepare for sales calls in really far more effective ways with a great deal more insight and depth than you're probably bringing to those cold calls. And this will also help you to get more aligned with your buyers. This is just really cool. This is an app called Crystal Nose. Crystal Nose reads what people have written in social media and it reads what's been written about them. And based on what they are putting out there in social media, it's analyzing their personality. It, it, it analyzes what they pay attention to, what they respond to, and from that it gives you specific tips, concrete, actionable tips about how to communicate with anyone. So Crystal, what it's doing is it's assigning a DISC, D-I-S-C, DISC personality profile type. So if you know that language of DISC, then this will have even greater value. If you look up there near the picture of, of the person that I'm using as a sample, a dear friend of mine, it gives uh, a DISC language type right there. Okay, now, um, even if you don't know DISC, these tips are going to be so simple and easy for you to use that, that you can't go wrong. I want to walk you through some of these. On screen, this is actually just a partial overview. This is about 25% of the initial information that's displayed on the first screen. And, and by the way, I, I have to give you the, this um, tip. This is actually pretty addictive. It's so fast and so easy and so high value that you're probably going to get addicted pretty quickly to it. So I should tell you that a limited number of crystal insights like this are available for free each month. And if you want unlimited access, you'll, you'll end up having to pay $19 a month. You decide if that's worth it for you, but do go in and give this a try so you can at least take advantage of, of the number that's free every month. Okay, so this is the on-screen overview, just 25% of it or so. But I want to show you a few more slides because there's even more here that Crystal will give you. It gives you insights about what it will be like for you, because it knows you too, what it will be like for you to work with your prospect or customer or your boss or whoever you, you put uh, into Crystal. Now, each of these line items, and again, you're just seeing a very partial list here, each of these line items is a click-through with even more depth of information. And what you see there, that 71%, that is Crystal's assessment, looking at me, looking at Lori, looking at our two personalities based on what we're putting out in social media and how we respond to information that's out there, it's saying that we're going to have about a 71% rate of success working with each other. However, we can increase that percent by taking advantage of all the tips that Crystal gives us. So uh, really, really helpful stuff. Now, when I click on any one of, of those um, items that's listed here, this is the sort of thing that I would see. It's going to give me more information that gives me those, those tips. So these really specific tips about things like how to manage change together, or how to give feedback to, to my prospect, um, how to, to share a solution and, and describe that. Just, just think how much more time you can save, how much more effective you can be if you know things like this. Okay, if you know, for example, that when stressed, your prospect will really want to keep things organized, that that would help your prospect to manage stress and navigate through it. Or how about as you're introducing and managing change that, um, that you know that this particular prospect needs some, some deadlines and some consistent pressure to, to make things happen and to keep things moving forward. Well, by knowing that and doing that, responding to what you see here, you eliminate all the guesswork you don't have to, to wonder what happened or where things fell apart. You manage on the, at the onset 
increasing the likelihood that you're going to be more successful. Now, I've field tested this tool. I've seen reps use it. I've used it myself. And I've found this tool to be very, very useful, even with complete strangers. It's actually um, it's a little bit spooky to know this much about a person that you've never met before. Um, but it's also it's kind of awesome because they will trust you much more readily and they'll appreciate your style adaptations right off the bat. Okay, now if you enable this additional feature, Crystal will even coach you as you're writing emails to your prospects and customers. Here's an example of what it serves you as you write. It's looking at your word choice, and it's thinking about your word choice and how that will or will not resonate with the person that you're writing to. So there's a ton of insight and lots of support from this first hack alone. Crystalnose.com is where you go to get this one. Remember, you get a free uh, limited number of uses every month. So you might choose to use those for your biggest opportunities or where you need the greatest insight. Or if you're like me, you're probably going to get hooked, and you may choose to, to get an unlimited access uh, from crystalnose.com. Well, here's number two. This is another automated support that saves you time, but it only triggers what you ask it to do for you. So it's a simple setup at the beginning. But it's really important um, for all of us to, to stay on top of changes and breaking news that pertain to our top prospects and, and our customers. Well, you already know that. Um, but if you're not already using Google Alerts to do this, then you should be. In fact, there's an advanced step beyond this. But let me start here on the left-hand side with the basics of Google Alerts. Let me explain how I use this. Um, I set up an alert for all my customers' business names, and for the primary contacts I have in each business. Each alert takes no time, like, like five seconds, maybe 10 seconds to set up. And then once I've set it up, until I cancel it or modify it, Google sends me an alert anytime one of these people or one of those companies appears in an online news story or an optimized blog post. And it's a same-day alert delivered to my email inbox. Now, if the headline in the email looks important, I open it up and I read the story. Then I send an email or make a call with, oh, you know, congratulations or follow-up questions or whatever is appropriate to the situation in live time, same day. Just last week, and this is not the first time it's happened, but just last week I learned via a Google alert that a former client had announced an acquisition. So I immediately sent congratulations and I asked how they'd be bringing the sales team in that new market up to speed. And well, that, like I said, that was just a week ago and I've already got the contract for conducting the sales training, something they really even hadn't had a chance to think about until I wrote and, and prompted them with that question. And, and the way I see this is it's, it, it's better for me to get in there quick, to be very responsive as their once partner and, and, again, future partner, to be quick before someone else sees that story and seizes the opportunity. Okay, so you can get alerts to do a whole lot more for you. Google Alerts is the starting point. Maybe you're already using that. But I suggest also using TalkWalker which is another free alert service. TalkWalker gives you alerts about what's appearing in news and articles, just like Google, but it also crawls blogs and discussion boards. So you're going to get more quantity and more quality with TalkWalker, and also more flexibility because TalkWalker, well, you, can, uh, you can set it for daily or weekly updates if you want to manage how you receive that information. And if you prefer, you can ask TalkWalker to text the alerts to you instead of emailing them. And then one other thing, if you um, happen to work like I do with, with multinational companies or, or prospects, you can choose which languages you receive those alerts in. So you know, Google Alerts only is giving you English language alerts from English language 
media, if that's how you access Google Alerts, but TalkWalker will give you anything and everything you want from anywhere in the world. Now, there are other services, other alert services out there. I just happen to prefer TalkWalker because it's free and it's easy and it's comprehensive for all the things I need. Again, it just takes literally seconds to set it up. You set it up, you forget about it, and when the information is out there, TalkWalker gives it to you. Automate it, forget it, respond to it as you need to. Now, if you need more detail, uh, even greater depth about your prospects' activities on, let's say, social media, um, take a look at, at Mention.com. It's not free, but it can tell you practically anything you want to know about social media posts uh, that mention or are generated by your prospect or customer. So Mention even lets you set up automated responses to certain kinds of tweets they might post. So Mention.com is a great way to get on your prospects or customers' radar without spending a single second of your time after you do the initial setup. Phew, so that's just two out of seven. Uh, number three, like this one, is also about being really responsive to your priority buyers, whether they be prospects or customers. It's all about getting ahead of the curve and being responsive. This hack, called Sidekick, is really handy for, for two purposes. Because your responsiveness is a sales hack that, that saves time, it improves your rate of connection, and it eliminates guesswork about whether or not someone has seen your emails. So here's how it works. Let's say you send out cold emails or uh, emails about something that's important, and, and you want to know if the recipient actually opened up that email or not. And if you just want to know the status of whether or not it's been opened, you could refer to your activity stream and, and see that history. That's up to you. You go and, and look up your activity stream anytime you like. But let's say you send multiple emails and you get no reply. You can look to see if there's a pattern. Is there a pattern in the, the ones that are, that are being opened? Well, if so, then you'll know that's a good time to catch the buyer at his or her desk. They're not replying to you but you can see when they are looking at those emails and maybe follow up with a phone call or stop by. Okay, now let's say you also want to strike while the iron is hot. At that moment when you are top of mind with the prospect because they've just seen your email and they opened it up so you know they actually saw it. You can send up a real-time notification like the one I, I gave you a sample of here in the lower right corner. And that real-time notification will pop up immediately when your email is opened. Well, there you go. Then you send that follow-up. If they're not calling you back right away, or you can pick up the phone and build on that email because they are thinking about you, the information is fresh in their mind right at that moment. Sidekick is free. You can, uh, all you have to do is, is install this. Uh, it's a Chrome extension to set this up. And you can also connect this to your CRM so that it pulls in information and you have that uh, a ability to track what's happening with your emails. Now there's one other way, we'll call this a, a bonus way. It's a little bit more sophisticated. Let's say, let's say you want to know uh, which subject line on mass emails gets the most attention. You can just do an A-B split. Send out two different subject lines and compare the open rate in this activity stream you'll immediately know which subject line is more effective, and that's the one that you'll want to keep using. One more hack, number four. Let's look at one more hack that comes from technology, and it's one that lightens your load so you can spend more time on those sales activities that really do move the needle. This is actually one of my personal favorites, what used to happen when I would set appointments, maybe you have the same experience, it would go a little bit like this. I'd send an email and request a time suggesting a few alternatives in that email. And my prospect or my client would email back and offer some different times. Two or three emails later, we'd settle on a time. We would have negotiated our schedules, 
and then one of us would initiate the meeting planner and the other would accept it. That's too much wasted time, too much effort, too much frustration, too much time in between our responses to each other. It just hangs out there and, and it's unresolved. So now I offer the link you see on screen. This is what I offer to people, that, that link, deb.calvert, or yeah, debcalvert.youcanbookme. That is my personal link. I have it posted on my website and in my email signature line too. Now people go there and they choose from times that are open on my calendar. I happen to use Google Calendar. This is also available with Outlook and other standard calendars. That's my calendar where I already schedule my appointments. And now when people book me using this service, my calendar is instantly updated with their appointment and I get an email notification of the booked appointment. It's a whole lot faster. It's much easier. We don't have this back and forth. Now, of course, you've probably seen something like this. There are dozens of these services. I like this one. You can book me because, again, it's free. It's easy, and it's very versatile. Um, you can customize the look of your displayed calendar, and you can interface this, as I said, with all the common calendar apps. Let me address some concerns that, that you might have. I was concerned that people might find this to be a bit impersonal. In fact, I resisted making this change for quite a while, um, years, <laughs> since I was first exposed to this. Um, but the only response since I've installed and started using this is very, very positive. People appreciate that I'm making it easy to find time with me. So this is how I present it to my clients and prospects. I just say it straight out. I, I say, here's a fast and easy way to book time with me so we won't have that hassle of going back and forth to coordinate a time. They like it, they use it, and they appreciate it. And then one other thing, if you are worried, like I was, about losing control of your schedule, don't be. I mean, this it's so easy for you to control it. You just block out the times when you wouldn't want people to set up calls with you. And the only thing that displays publicly as available time is whatever you choose to leave open in the calendar you already use. To get started, just go to bookme.com. Let's look at three more sales hacks. These are low tech. You don't have to do anything at all to set these up. Number five is a super simple tip. In fact, this is so super simple that I almost left it out. Some of you will think it's stupid simple, but bear with me. Here's the thing. I observe a lot more salespeople not doing this than those who are doing this. And I've clocked a lot of inside sellers. I literally clock them. A lot of them spend about 10% of their time waiting for pages to load and then navigating back and forth between the pages they use over and over again. Seriously, I'm talking like six minutes out of every hour that gets wasted on that navigation alone. It happens in little you know, 15, 20 second micro disruptions that add up. They also cause tension and they break concentration. You know that feeling when you're impatient because something won't load quickly? You can eliminate that feeling along with eliminating a lot of that wasted time. Now, I've added in this hack, as I said, even though it's super easy, I've added it in because it will dramatically improve your efficiency, and it's just this. At the start of your day, open up the four or five tabs that you use most often, multiple tabs, and keep them open all day long. This would probably be your calendar, your CRM, your email, and a Google search, let's say. You're not going to spend any more time logging in or out no more loading time, no more back and forth time. Those tabs are going to stay open all the time. And if you use multiple screens or devices, you'll be very consistent day to day about what you display in which place. So if the first tab is your email, that's always your first tab. That way you begin to, to go on autopilot to find it and access it. This is going to condition you and it's going to shave seconds as you glance from one location to another. And again, those seconds add up. This does truly make a difference. Now I know, because I've, I've coached other people on this before, I know it sounds so basic that you might not really see the value. You might even skip this one. 
please don't. As I say, I've tracked the productivity for reps who do this and reps who don't, and it does make a significant difference. Okay, now the next hack is, is pretty simple too, not, not quite this simple, uh, but equally important. This one is all about limiting the time you spend in the various parts of your sales process. This is designed uh, to keep you disciplined in moving through the steps in your sales process. If you sometimes find yourself getting trapped in, in rabbit holes when you're doing pre-call planning and research, then this hack is for you. I strongly recommend that you set time limits for every discrete step in your sales process. We don't have time to talk about every one of those, so this is just a, a sampler uh, of, of what you could do beyond this. But, but the amount of time you allocate for any of those steps should be directly correlated to the size of the opportunity with a particular client or prospect. I, I initially categorize my prospects as A, B, or C. And that designation depends on the size of the business and the likely breadth of the opportunity that I will have with them. Before I even place the first call or write the first email, I've allocated a set amount of time to research that person and company. And in my business, because of the way I'm set up and the kind of work that I do, I allocate 10 minutes pre-call research to the C's, 15 minutes to the B's, and 20 minutes to the A's. Now, bear in mind, that's a lot of time. Most of the clients I coach use more sophisticated lead generation tools than I do, and they don't need to spend nearly that much time. So for them, it's, it's more typically three, five, and seven minutes for their C, B, and A clients, their prospects. You'll decide what the right amount of time is for you, but the more calls you need to make, the less time you ought to be spending on the research per person. Now, what I do here to keep this discipline and this rigor is I use a Google Timer. That's actually the, the fifth tab that I would keep open in my multiple tabs. If you don't know about Google Timer, um, let me talk about that. So it, it, Google Timer, it forces you to work efficiently and not to get distracted by information that's interesting but not useful. So we'll call this a bonus hack. Um, to, to get a Google Timer, just, just open a new tab, go to Google, and type in the words, set timer for five minutes or set timer for seven minutes. And after you type that in, just as if it were a search, push start, because it's going to serve you up a timer, push start, and then go back to the other tab you're using to conduct your search for that online research. Google will give you an alarm. It will let you know when your time is expired. I promise you, you won't like it the first 10 times you use it. It will be frustrating to be this disciplined, but you'll get used to it. And, and it's actually going to help you to be a lot more efficient in the way that you do your research. But force yourself, push yourself even when it's uncomfortable. When the time is up, make your call or send your email, write your email. Don't belabor the research process. Just act on what you've got. Another way uh, that I time limit myself in the prospecting phase, and technically I guess this also qualifies as another bonus hack, um, but in, in um, coaching sales reps, one of the biggest time wasters I see is how sellers respond to uh, deflections when they're prospecting. A, a deflection is when a prospect says, hey, okay, why don't you send me some more information? Sellers read this as good news, as a sign of a buyer's interest. It's not. That buyer just wants to get off the phone. It's the fastest way to do it, and buyers know it. Well, guess what happens next? You end up spending 10 or 20 minutes crafting the email, gathering the follow-up information, and sending what the buyer requested. You're then going to spend many, many minutes calling back and trying to reconnect with that buyer, often to no avail. Send me some information is not a green light. Don't treat it like one. 
to save time and actually advance this sale, you need to respond differently to deflections. When someone asks for more information, I probe. I ask specifically, what would you like me to focus on? What problems are you trying to solve? I, I explain I need this additional input in order to tailor what I send to them. And their explanation takes, my explanation I should say, typically takes less than a minute, and it's far more effective than any follow-up I can send out there on a wing and a prayer into cyberspace. And I get them talking with that one or two questions that takes less than a minute, and they start talking and that dialogue shifts the entire trajectory of our relationship. So when you hear a deflection, remember that, that, that that's a moment of truth. It's really important that you dodge the deflection and avoid the temptation to appease that buyer who's trying to dodge you. Last but, but certainly not least, sales hack number seven. This is a good one. I observed the seller using this technique on purpose about three months ago. And I'll admit, I, I didn't get it at first. In fact, after the fourth or fifth time I, I saw this salesperson do it, I, I coached him to stop doing it. And then he explained his technique. And as he explained it, I was, I was sort of skeptical, but I, but I was intrigued. So I watched. And then I began experimenting with this approach and coaching others on it and observing what happened. And I've decided this actually does work. So here's what you do. You call or email the wrong person on purpose. This could be the person who's too high up in the organization to deal with the purchases you'll be asking them to make. Or it could be a peer in another department what you'll be doing is presenting value that's compelling, but it's value that this person can't make decisions about, and you know it. Okay, so for example, you'd contact the CFO about an HR system that can save substantial dollars for the company and decrease employee turnover. The CFO or the CFO's gatekeeper will see that there's merit in what you have to offer. It sounds pretty good, but they won't talk to you. They, they can't. They aren't, are not interested. However, they'll be very happy to get rid of you by passing you along to the right person, in this case, probably the, the CHRO. And suddenly, now there's an internal transfer of a call or there's an email that's being forwarded and now you can name drop, and legitimately this, this does sound like you're someone who's connected to somebody important inside the organization. Psychologically, for your buyer, that's pretty hard to resist. And this saves you time. Although this sounds so counterintuitive, it really does save you time because you're getting through faster to the person you want to talk to. So there you have it seven sales hacks that you can try, any and all of them, right away. And hopefully you've heard at least one fresh new idea. I am curious, so I've put up a survey for you. Uh, just mark any of those that, that are new ideas for you. And hopefully you'll try a few of these, and you'll see the saved minutes adding up so you can use them in other ways that make you more productive every day. Now don't forget to, to download those resources I created for you. And if you'd like to get more, much more, research with buyers and sellers in the field, then take a look at my book. Um, it's on Amazon. Or talk to me about the training programs that we offer to help you and your organization become more productive in advancing the sale. And let me know. There's my email address again and my social media contact information. Let me know what questions you have about driving sales productivity. I'm always on the lookout for more sales hacks, and I will be bringing these to you in, in various forms over the next year. So it's important that we stay in touch if you got any value from this. And if you have ideas for me, oh, please don't hold back. I'd love to share your sales hacks with others too. That's it for this webinar. Just one more reminder to download those bonus resources in the Attachments tab and to subscribe to this Bright Talk channel for more of this kind of content. And most importantly, please connect with me. 
and with People First Productivity Solutions because, as you know, there's nothing more important in sales than making the right connections. That in and of itself is the ultimate sales hack.